So I've been teasing this feature for a while, and if you're a longtime listener of mine, you'll remember it fondly, or maybe not so fondly, I guess. But whatever the case, here we go. Welcome to the Musical Microscope. This is a segment where I take an ultra-magnified view of a particular song, artist, or maybe an entire musical genre, and see what it is that makes it work. Or, more likely, not work. Obviously, the coronavirus has impacted every single aspect of our lives and culture. As further evidence of that, we have a brand new subgenre of music that has been spawned or inspired by the crisis that I guess I'll refer to as pandemic pop. Much in the way that there's a wide range of viewpoints about the virus, there's an equally diverse spectrum of songs that have begun to emerge across multiple demographics. Well, maybe not quite an equally diverse range of thoughts. I haven't heard a song yet that says, it's all a damn hoax, or comparing the government's response and lockdowns to Japanese internment camps. Somehow that's actually a view someone has. Nevertheless, there's still quite a mix of attitudes on the topic. So to illustrate that, let's start out with Pitbull, with the song, I Believe That We Will Win, parentheses, world anthem. You know what spreads faster than any virus is fear. And when it comes to fear, you can either forget everything and run, I say, I, or you can face everything and rise. I believe. And let me tell you what I believe. I believe that. I believe we will face everything I believe and rise. We will win. Yeah, I know one of the first thoughts I had when the global pandemic started was, gee, I wonder what that guy that calls himself Mr. Worldwide thinks of the whole situation. Well, now we know. Uh, kinda. I guess. So, he's saying that fear spreads faster than any virus, which I suppose is true. Fear is often the result of that which we don't understand, and there's a whole lot that we still don't know about COVID-19. Furthermore, what we do know can be pretty frightening as well. Also, I don't have objective analysis as to how many people are killed by fear. Perhaps the number is in the millions when you consider that fear is a motivation for bigotry, oppression, and subjugation but that research is far above my pay grade. Meanwhile, if this data is accurate, COVID-19 has racked up well over 100,000 deaths in the United States. So yeah, I can see how people would be afraid. I also don't know what he means by either running from fear or face everything and rise. I never thought I would say this about a Pitbull song, but I think I need to hear more at least to better understand what the fuck he's talking about. It's not how you fall, it's how you get back up. And what don't kill us make a stronger boy, bet that up. Take a swing at us, you better hit hard. Cause when we swing back, it's like, oh God. What the hell kind of Rocky Balboa fanfic nonsense is this? It's not how you fall, but how you get back up? What about the more than 350,000 people worldwide that haven't gotten back up? I think how they fell is what it's about. As for this line about what doesn't kill us makes us stronger and how you'll back that up, I didn't know Mr. Worldwide was a virologist or medical doctor, but from everything I've seen from actual medical doctors, it would seem that some people that survive COVID-19 have long-lasting permanent damage to their respiratory system. So, as a matter of fact, what didn't kill them has made them objectively weaker perhaps forever. And what the fuck are these lines about swinging at us and we'll swing back? This is a highly infectious respiratory disease, not a goddamn schoolyard bully or some opponent in a ring or even a different faction, tribe, or country. You can't punch coronavirus in the face and make it back down. The chorus is just, I believe we will win, over and over. And I'm not sure what the win condition is in Pitbull's scenario. If that means developing a vaccine, well, I hope that happens, but so far there has never been a successful vaccine developed for anything in the coronavirus family. There have been some very promising breakthroughs, but it's a little early to declare victory. And to those of you that think the purpose of this song is to inspire some kind of hope or bring positive vibes, well, I don't think challenging the virus to fisticuffs is overwhelmingly effective, but hey, whatever gets you through the pandemic. The rest of this song continues with the idea of losing battles but winning the war and otherwise beating the virus into submission or whatever. 
I gotta tell you, after hearing this, I'm considering switching over to Team COVID. But maybe a different song would change the perspective a bit. Pitbull nails down the Gen Z and younger millennial crowd, while this next track definitely shifts to a demographic more likely to be hit hard by the coronavirus. Get ready, soccer moms from 1998, because here comes Michael Buble, Bare Naked Ladies, and Sofia Reyes with Gotta Be Patient. A one, two, three. Ooh, wop, wop. Ooh, wop, wop. Ooh. I just want to see my friends. I wanna walk the street again But I gotta be patient So let's enjoy this combination Ah yes, nothing says 2020 contemporary hit quite like doo-wop. Although, I guess Megan Trainer did have some success with that sound a few years back. Granted, she's the only one in over five decades to do so, and as much as I hate to say it, Michael Buble and the Bare Naked Ladies are no Megan Trainer, But you know what? They do know their audience. Most of the people that like these artists were kids during a time when a doo-wop pandemic jam would have been popular. Of course, I'm referring to the Hong Kong flu or H3N2 virus of 1968. Maybe that's what these guys were writing about. Anyway, looking at the lyrics, not too much outrageous here other than the idea of, so let's enjoy this confination. First, I honestly didn't know that confination was a natural conjugation of confine, but as it turns out, it is. So, I learned something today. Plus one for this song. Nevertheless, I don't think people are going to enjoy their confinement, especially when you consider about 40 million people are unemployed, and most of the people in the Bare Naked Ladies and Michael Buble audiences have seen a huge chunk of their retirement disappear. And they'd be naturally freaked out by that, given that they're about 55 to 70 plus years old and don't exactly have time on their side to get it back. But sure, let's do what they did in the Great Depression and make the best of it. I guess that's still better than Pitbull's punch the fucking virus in the dick approach. I just want to feel your love Cause Instagram is not enough for me So I gotta be patient Let's enjoy this combination. If you're old enough to listen to and enjoy Michael Buble and the Bare Naked Ladies, then you probably shouldn't be on Instagram. I'll break the news gently to you. Older people that are on Instagram are commonly referred to as Instagramps. If you have to ask, am I too old to be on Instagram? Then the answer is yes. Yes, you are. And before all of you that are over 50 with active Instagram accounts get all offended, this is just comedy. And besides, it's not healthy for people your age to get all riled up. Now, settle down, grab yourself some cream of wheat, sit there and relax. Dr. Phil will be on shortly. Okay, so back to this song. There is an attempt to bring in a younger audience to a degree with the addition of Sofia Reyes, and she basically just says the same thing that the bubble and BNL threw at us in the first couple of verses, albeit in Spanish. But Spanish doo-wop is still doo-wop, and it really doesn't work for me. All right, well, so far we've heard a couple of contrasting messages. One representing the younger crowd saying, rise up and punch the virus in the face. The other side saying, eh, I'll just make the best of it and be patient. So let's look at an artist that kind of skews right down the middle of these two age groups. Here's 21 Pilots with Level of Concern. Some people are definitely feeling a sense of panic and that the world has gone insane. And the writer compares this sense of panic and general dread in a global pandemic to the feeling of asking someone to go steady? First of all, who says go steady? But more to the point, how histrionic are you to compare asking someone to consistently date you to a global pandemic? Wow. This line here is a little cringy also. I can almost see it becoming a bad pickup line once the clubs and bars open up on a more widespread basis. 
Hey, baby, want to be my little quarantine? Ugh, creepy. Anyway, these first few lines give me the idea that this guy is more obsessed with his brand new relationship than the fact that the world around him is completely crumbling. I told you a level of concern, but you walk by like you never heard. You could bring down my level of concern. Just need you to tell me we're all right. Tell me we're okay. Yeah, fuck all the dead people. Please tell me that you and I are going to be all right. Please? Panic on the brain, Michael's gone insane, Julie starts to make me nervous, I don't really care what they would say, I'm asking you to stay, my bunker underneath the surface. According to an interview with Tyler Joseph, Michael and Julie refer to generic people that we all know and have in our lives that are the self-proclaimed experts about the virus, society, law, and everything else going on right now. I would say this part of the song is extremely relatable. I know at some point I'll have a rant or two about this very topic. Looking at the rest of the song, it's more repeats of the same pre-chorus and chorus. At times, it's being belted out in an auto-tuned falsetto, but overall, it's not bad. Of the three selections I've shown you, it's easily the most palatable, and it's actually kind of catchy. Now, there are certainly many more songs popping up in this genre all the time, from artists like Bono, Randy Newman, yeah, apparently he's still alive, and One Republic, just to name a few. But I think I've given you enough to chew on for now. Besides, it's not like COVID-19 is going anywhere anytime soon, and I have a feeling that more songs in this genre will pop up later in the year, perhaps on my worst songs of 2020 list. You never know. Thanks for checking out The Musical Microscope. If you have suggestions for songs you'd like me to take a closer look at or just want to tell me how much I suck or maybe on the off chance you actually enjoyed this content, then feel free to leave a comment below or contact me through any one of my many other avenues. And of course, if you want to continue to support my content, go to patreon.com slash Michael Groff.